All who have travelled through the delicious scenery of North Devon must needs know the little white town of Biddeford, which slopes upwards from its broad tide river paved with yellow sands and many arched old bridge where salmon wait for autumn floods toward the pleasant uplands on the west. Above the town, the hills close in, cushioned with deep oak woods, through which juts here and there a crag of fern fringed slate. Below, they lure and open more and more in softly rounded knolls and fertile squares of red and green. Till they sink into the wide expanse of hazy flats, rich salt marshes, and rolling sand hills, where Torridge joins her sister Tor, and both together flow quietly toward the broad surges of the bar and the everlasting thunder of the long Atlantic swell. Presently the old town stands there, beneath its soft Italian sky, fanned day and night by the fresh ocean breeze, which forbids alike the keen winter frosts and the fierce thunder heats of the Midland. And presently, it has stood there for now, perhaps eight hundred years since the first Grenville, cousin of the Conqueror, returning from the conquest of South Wales, Drew round him trusty Saxon serfs and free Norse rovers with their golden curls and dark Silurian Britons from the Swansea shore and all the mingled blood which still gives to the seaward folk of the next county their strength and intellect. And even in these levelling days, their peculiar beauty of face and form. If I write, Biddeford was not merely a pleasant country town whose quay was haunted by a few coasting craft. It was one of the chief ports of England. It furnished seven ships to fight the Armada, even more than a century afterwards, said the chroniclers. It sent more vessels to the northern trade than any port in England, saving London and Topsham, and was the centre of a local civilization and enterprise small perhaps compared with the vast efforts of the present day. But who dare despise the day of small things if it has proved to be the dawn of mighty ones? And it is to the sea life and labour of Biddeford and Dartmouth and Topsham and Plymouth and many another little western town that England owes the foundation of her naval and commercial glory. It was the men of Devon, the Drakes and Hawkins, Gilberts and Raleigh's, Grenvilles and Oxenhams, and a host more of forgotten worthies, whom we shall learn one day to honour as they deserve, to whom she owes her commerce, her colonies, her very existence. Mm-hmm. 